What I want to do is wave splash photography. G'day everybody, my name is Ralph and I'm down at Moffat Beach just off Caloundra in the Queensland sunny coast. It's beautiful here and this morning as you can see it's a glorious sunrise behind me but what I want to do is something I saw about 18 months ago for the very first time I thought gosh that looks really cool. I, I don't know what to call it, wave splash photography? Basically catching that, that moment, that tiny moment when the waves crash against the sand and then spring up and create those beautiful patterns. That's what I'm after today. There's a guy on Instagram who was posting a bunch of this and so I contacted him, reached out to him and he gave me some extremely unhelpful advice. He goes, oh look it doesn't really matter what, what settings you use or what lens you have, you're just going to get down to the beach when the... I'm like so basically you've given me nothing. So today I've come to use the skills I have about photography to apply it to this setting to see if it's gonna look amazing and I thought this this setting is great so the, the the sand is really a shelly consistency not like the Gold Coast where it's really silky it's it's quite gritty which I think adds to texture the beach itself has a, a sharp incline so it, it is on a bit of a ramp and basically the waves smash into that ramp I thought surely this is gonna work <laughs> who knows stick around we'll find out is about to come up and it's creating this beautiful golden glow it's just looking just mm, spectacular and so I'm going to use that as a bit of a backdrop the Sun needs to come right up though it's just it's taken a while I don't know what it's doing why it's dawdling around but um, this looks really creamy and foamy and so I'm quite optimistic about my chances with this kind of photography, I'm figuring I need an aperture of about six or seven to create a little bit of bokeh in the background. Bokeh is the blur in the background. Some call it bokeh, but that sounds a little bit silly, don't you think? I'm going to use a fast shutter speed because I want to catch the action of that. And then I'll judge my ISO based on what the light temperature is like. I don't want to go higher than 800, 1000 ISO. I don't like operating um, higher than that. You lose quality. So I'd much rather um, push the limits of the camera elsewhere. Sometimes it can't be helped. Have a look at this sunrise as it comes up. And there's these massive container ships that go along the horizon and a bit of a rainstorm coming in. And I don't know if you can make out the kayak or two there. So uh, it's really cool to, get to, um, to shoot this as the sun pops up and I get ready to get down and dirty in the sand. That sounds terrible. As I get ready to get sandy in the sand. Hmm. shooting stills like this you want to put it on a high frame rate I think the Nikon Z6 shoots about 11 frames a second and that's where I'm gonna set it on so you catch every moment as the focus shifts around I'm gonna put it on continual focus so it's gonna keep focusing every single shot depending on where I point the camera at the moment I'm looking at 500 uh, shutter speed which will really freeze the action I'm shooting on a uh, 5.6 aperture and my ISO is at 100 um, that may shift and change, so I'll just put the details up with each image. Um, you can just see how we go. Alright, I'm going to set you guys up so you can watch what I'm doing. But if you can see, um, look at this. That's where the shore breakers are. So, if you can just chill out there. Oh, that's not going to work. Just the water's coming up. just chill out just there.
They're a good pro tip for you. Take off your two second timer. It's not effective in these circumstances. All right, so if you're doing this, you have to wait just a few seconds for the focus to pick up. I'm shooting right into the sun. See the sun is creating this beautiful beam um, right about here. So I'm shooting um, there on the, um, in, the, in the shadows to get some nice color background behind the waves. So all things are looking, um, looking really good this morning, providing that dog doesn't do a wee on my camera gear. That would be most unfortunate. Sun's just gone behind this dirty big cloud. It's going to be there for a while, which loosen, lessens some of the intensity of the colours. So I might change uh, my angle and make the most of this natural inconvenience that has occurred. It's not that. It's not really a big deal at all. I'm going to shoot from an angle and see if that makes it look more epic. <laughs> Got a fan. And as you can see, the tide is creeping further and further up the beach. But I haven't got wet yet. My gear's not got wet yet. It's been a good morning. The sun is looking just mm, mint. I always find you learn a lot when you do a shoot like this and as I was watching the waves um, what, what I learned was there's this moment when the waves come crashing down and that's you take first shot and you keep clicking and then it bumps back up for a second and as it bumps back up the sun's behind it to highlight it so if you're gonna do this um, you want to put it on continuous shutter and just wait for that second flurry it's always good when there's um, crashing onto the sand rather than onto a previous wave that's there so it's just waiting and watching and experimenting as you go the other learning I've had this morning is that I do not like dogs as much as I thought I did I'm definitely not a cat person as I was shooting a dog runs up to me I didn't realize I was in the moment this dog runs up to me all of a sudden the, the lens goes dark and I look up and there's a dog that scurries away and I look at my lens and there's sand that he's stuck right against the glass and then he's gone and moved his nose and scratched my lens. That's a thousand bucks. That is quite disappointing. So I'm no longer a dog person. Hmm. Anyway, maybe that will be a good title for the name of this YouTube um, clip. How to destroy a thousand dollar lens <laughs> what do you think um, any questions about this put them in the comments below apologies I keep calling it the description below the descriptions a bit I write and then the comments are the bit you write not that you write many but if you want to they're well received I really enjoy uh, reading them and responding to them and they help out the channel if you want to help out some more if you've enjoyed this content if you enjoy these little adventures please subscribe below and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.